Three Practical Biblical Steps to Wisdom Here are three practical biblical steps to gaining wisdom. The fear of the Lord is a concept that can be understood in a few key ways. Reverence and respect. It involves recognizing and honoring God's greatness, power, and holiness. This kind of fear is not about being scared but about having a deep respect and awe for God's nature and His authority. Obedience and Devotion It leads to a lifestyle of obedience and devotion. When you truly fear the Lord, you are motivated to follow His commandments and seek to live in a way that pleases Him. Acknowledgement of God's Sovereignty It means understanding and accepting that God is in control of all things. This recognition can guide your decisions and actions, helping you align your life with His will. In summary, the fear of the Lord is about a profound respect for God that influences how you live and make decisions. It's the starting point for gaining wisdom, as it positions you to seek and follow God's guidance in all aspects of life. Proverbs 9 verse 10, NIV, states, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. This verse highlights two key points. The fear of the Lord. True wisdom begins with a deep reverence and respect for God. This reverence acknowledges God's authority and aligns one's life with His moral and ethical standards. Knowledge of the Holy One Gaining a deeper understanding of God, His nature, His ways, and His desires leads to true insight and understanding. It's through knowing God that one gains wisdom and clarity in life. In essence, wisdom starts with a respectful relationship with God and grows through knowing Him more intimately. Here's a closer look at the practical steps of seeking counsel and studying scripture. Seek counsel. Value wisdom from others. Proverbs 15 verse 22 in IV says, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. Surrounding yourself with wise and experienced individuals can provide valuable perspectives and guidance. This can include mentors, pastors, or trusted friends. Choose counselors wisely. Look for those who are knowledgeable in areas relevant to your situation and who align with your values. Their advice should be based on sound principles and a genuine understanding of your circumstances. Be open to feedback. Be willing to listen and consider the advice given, even if it challenges your own views. Wise counsel can help you see things from different angles and make more informed decisions. Study scripture. Regular reading. Make Bible reading a regular part of your routine. Daily engagement with scripture helps you become familiar with its teachings and principles. Psalm 119 verse 105 in IV says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Meditation and Reflection Spend time meditating on and reflecting upon Bible passages. This helps you understand their deeper meanings and how they apply to your life. Joshua 1 verse 8 in IV encourages this practice. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Study in context. Understand verses in their historical and literary context to grasp their full meaning. Use study tools such as commentaries, concordances, and Bible dictionaries to deepen your understanding. Apply the teachings. Put into practice what you learn from Scripture. James 1 verse 22 in IV advises, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Application of biblical principles leads to wisdom in everyday life. By seeking wise counsel and immersing yourself in Scripture, you can gain insight and make decisions that are aligned with biblical wisdom. Proverbs 15 verse 22 in IV states, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. This verse emphasizes the importance of seeking guidance and input from others when making decisions or planning. Here's what it suggests. Importance of counsel. Plans or projects are more likely to fail without proper advice and support. Consulting with others who have experience or wisdom can help you avoid pitfalls and make better decisions. Value of multiple perspectives. Having input from a variety of advisors can provide a broader perspective and help you make more informed choices. It encourages gathering diverse opinions to ensure that decisions are well-rounded and thoroughly considered. Success through collaboration. Success is more likely when you have a team of trusted advisors who can offer their insights and support. This collaborative approach can enhance the quality of your plans 
and increase the likelihood of achieving your goals. In summary, seeking and valuing the counsel of others is a practical step toward making successful and wise decisions. Psalm 119 verse 105 in IV states, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. This verse uses the metaphor of light to illustrate how God's word, his teachings and commandments, guides and directs one's life. Here's what it signifies. Guidance. Just as a lamp or light illuminates a path, God's word provides direction and clarity for making decisions and navigating life's journey. It helps you see the right way to go. Illumination in darkness. In times of uncertainty or difficulty, scripture offers insight and hope, helping you find your way when you might otherwise be lost or confused. Practical application. This verse underscores the practical value of reading and reflecting on the Bible. By regularly engaging with scripture, you can gain wisdom and understanding that guides your actions and choices. In essence, Psalm 119 verse 105 highlights the essential role of the Bible in providing direction and clarity for living a wise and purposeful life. Joshua 1 verse 8 in IV says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. This verse provides guidance on how to live according to God's will and experience success. Here's what it entails. Constant engagement. The verse emphasizes the importance of keeping the scriptures always on your lips, meaning regularly speaking about and reflecting on God's word. This constant engagement helps internalize its teachings. Meditation and reflection. Meditating on the Bible day and night suggests a deep, ongoing reflection on its messages. This practice helps you understand and apply its principles more effectively. Obedience to the law, being careful to do everything written in it, highlights the importance of not just reading but also obeying the commands and teachings found in Scripture. Promise of Prosperity The verse concludes with a promise that such dedication to God's Word will lead to prosperity and success. This prosperity is often understood as spiritual well-being and alignment with God's purposes rather than merely material success. Overall, Joshua 1 verse 8 encourages a dedicated and continuous engagement with Scripture as a means of living wisely and aligning with God's will. James 1 verse 22 in IV states, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. This verse underscores the importance of not just hearing or reading Scripture, but actively applying its teachings to your life. Here's what it signifies. Active obedience. The verse stresses that true adherence to God's word involves more than passive listening or reading. It requires putting the teachings into practice in your daily life. Avoiding self-deception. Merely listening to the word without acting on it can lead to self-deception, where one might believe they are following God's will while failing to make any real changes or live according to his commands. Practical Application. This encourages practical application of biblical principles, ensuring that your actions reflect the teachings and values found in Scripture. Genuine Faith Genuine faith is demonstrated through action. As you apply the teachings of the Bible, you live out your faith in tangible ways, which strengthens your relationship with God and aligns your life with His will. In essence, James 1 verse 22 calls for a faith that is active and actionable, highlighting the importance of integrating biblical teachings into everyday life. Practicing humility is a key aspect of growing in wisdom and maintaining a healthy relationship with God and others. Here's how the Bible describes and encourages humility. Biblical Perspective on Humility Acknowledging Our Dependence on God Humility involves recognizing our need for God's guidance and grace. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 in IV states, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. This highlights the importance of relying on God rather than solely on our own wisdom. Being open to learning. James 1 verse 5 in IV encourages humility by saying, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. A humble person is willing to seek wisdom from God and others recognizing that they don't have all the answers. Listening to others. Proverbs 12 verse 15 in IV says, The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. 
Practicing humility involves listening to others' perspectives and being open to correction or guidance. Serving others, Jesus teaches about humility through service. In Mark 10 verses 44 to 45, NIV, Jesus says, Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Serving others is a practical expression of humility, avoiding arrogance and pride. Humility means putting aside arrogance and pride. 1 Peter 5 verse 5, in IV, advises, All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Practical Steps to Practice Humility Regular Self-Examination Reflect on your actions and attitudes, seeking to understand where you might need to grow in humility. Seek feedback. Be open to feedback from trusted friends, mentors, or family members, and be willing to make changes based on their input. Serve others. Look for opportunities to serve and support others selflessly without seeking recognition or reward. Pray for humility. Ask God to help you cultivate a humble heart and to reveal areas where you might be struggling with pride. Study scripture. Regularly read and meditate on passages about humility to reinforce its importance and application in your life. By practicing humility, you align yourself more closely with God's will and foster a spirit of learning and growth, which is crucial for gaining wisdom. James 1 verse 5 in Ivy states, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Here's what this verse conveys. Seek wisdom from God. When you feel uncertain or in need of guidance, turn to God in prayer and ask for wisdom. This verse encourages you to seek divine insight rather than relying solely on your own understanding. God's generosity. God is generous and willing to provide wisdom to those who ask. He doesn't withhold wisdom based on your past mistakes or shortcomings, as He gives without finding fault. Promise of Provision the verse promises that God will give wisdom to those who ask with sincerity and faith. It's an assurance that seeking God's guidance will not be in vain. Act of Humility Asking for wisdom is an act of humility, acknowledging that you need guidance and are open to receiving it from a higher source. In summary, James 1 verse 5 encourages believers to seek wisdom from God, trusting in His generosity and readiness to provide guidance and understanding. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 in IV says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. Here's what these verses mean. Trust in the Lord. This involves relying on God completely, placing your confidence in His wisdom and guidance rather than in your own limited perspective. Avoid relying on your own understanding. Recognize that your own understanding is imperfect and limited. Trusting God means acknowledging that His knowledge and plans are superior to your own. Submit to God's guidance. This means aligning your actions and decisions with God's will. Submitting to Him involves seeking His direction through prayer, studying scripture, and being open to His leading. Promise of Guidance The promise is that if you trust in God and submit to His will, He will guide you and make your path straight. This doesn't necessarily mean a trouble-free life, but rather that He will direct you in the right way and help you navigate life's challenges. In essence, Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 emphasizes the importance of complete trust in God and submission to His will as the path to receiving His guidance and direction.